We're fishing, man. Yeah. We're fishing for some stripers and we're doing some tagging and releasing. Wait, actually we're catching and then tagging and releasing. It's May 14th, 2025. And what we're gonna to do today is continue the work we've been doing to understand more about striped bass and their migratory habits and behaviors through not only uh, tagging them with spaghetti tags or tube tags, but tags that are satellite enabled. But I'm here with Bill Dablier from Gray's Fish Tag Research um, on this project. It's a multi-year project, isn't it, Bill? This is year seven, Mike. And uh, originally we did this privately with one or two boats and a couple friends and sponsors. But this year we have, we believe, 28 boats competing each sponsor this year for the first time has their own team, their own boat, and they're entered into the event. The goal is to deploy green, gray fish tag research spaghetti tag. In addition, we have five satellite tags. Our satellite tags are devices manufactured by wildlife computers. They collect data in three different ways. Water temperature, depth, and what we call geolocation. Geolocation gives us our tracking map of where the fish has gone. They're programmed each for six months. In addition to what we call our mini pat, we've introduced a new technology, which is the micro pat. The micro pat is a smaller division or a smaller device than our mini pat. So we're gonna look to study the first time ever a smaller class fish, 28 or so inches, where typically we're looking at a 40 inch fish. The device will do the same thing. It'll collect data in three different ways. That data, once it gets re the tag gets released from the fish, it'll transpa transport its information to Argo satellites overhead. One great thing about Argo satellites overhead, they just installed 12 new satellites to their constellation. What that means for us as a research program is that as this data is transmitted, it's collecting data through the satellites overhead. We now have 12 more satellites. So the gaps that may happen in those transmissions are gonna be eliminated. So the technology and the information that we gather is gonna be greater. We wanna thank the Fisherman Magazine for having us out. David Glassberg for captaining, uh, putting us on some fish. Work. Caught a great uh, 46 and a half uh, striper. Was able to put a satellite tag on that fish and that will give us some great um, information about what these striper do. Um, it was a great time getting out here on the water uh, here in New Jersey. Uh, we love the work that they're doing to understand what these fish are doing and to um, just hand that off to people who will uh, put that data to use. Yozuri is one of the sponsors and we're proud to be a small part of a great event. Uh, gives back to the fishery that gives back to all of us that we all care about so much. We don't really know what these stripers are doing. So the fish tag program helps us understand what the migration is, where they're going, and it helps us understand the fishery better. So without data, we really don't know what they're doing, but now that we do have the data, we're learning a lot more things, and the big fact is that the captains are helping us a ton. So the captains are tagging thousands of fish each year, and it really gives the, uh, the fishery, the anglers, more information about what's going on with these guys. The only way we're going to find out more about these fish is if we keep putting tags out there, satellite tags, spaghetti tags. We're getting returns from four years ago of, t of fish and we're finding like they're popping up in the same area that they were tagged in four years ago and that, that's a excellent information. Out of the 40 tags done so far, we've got an inordinate amount that have been actually physically retrieved. 16. 16. 16. Unheard of. Yeah. Unheard of. So that gives us the opportunity to crack this open, theoretically, and get the, the, the data. full 100% data set. So when this transmits, we get a portion of that data set sure. with the constellation. When we get a physical tab, we get 100% of that, da that, that data set. 40 so far, 45 after Thursday, May 15th. We're on, maybe. The fishing that we have around here, we're really fortunate to have what we have. It's, it's getting better and better every year. I know there's a lot of concern for the, the, the spawning of the smaller fish, but the large fish are here and the bite is on and it's just a great area to really fish. You can fish inside the bay, you can fish outside in the ocean. We love striped bass. It is what I grew up doing. It's what really was that, that turning point in my fishing life. You know, when I caught that first striped bass on the Susquehanna Flats, it changed me, right? I, I, it was, you know, it was that moment and I can remember it to this day
It was that moment that made me addicted to fishing. And it's only grown from there. I made a career out of it. And, uh, you know, that's why we have to give back. All right, and we're free. Yeah, Alex is on too. You got two fish on, Justin? We got triples. Triples? We got triples. <laughs> yeah, we got triples. I am not tagging the motor. <laughs> We're on right there. You're on. It's been a little slow until right now. <laughs> and now we got five on. Five on. We got five. Four. So, I mean, it, it just decided to get with it. But this place never disappoints. We haven't seen a small fish. We're here just tagging fish, you know. Trying to, you know, striped bass is the is the fish in the in this region super important to this region and uh, we put over 10,000 tags in these fish doing this thing for seven years so it's unreal over 30 gps satellite tags so now we have a little better idea where they go you know the striper fishery up here you know i i've been doing i've been at this one three years in a row and it's awesome i mean it's it's a really cool fishery the fish get all in here and congregated uh, just big fish, tough fish. It's fun, but it's got a cult following between the the guys fishing the surf and the beach, and the guys in the inlets and the guys right out here. It's if you're over, yeah, you're over. So, but yeah, it's pretty. It's awesome fishery. Fish are big, fish are tough, and uh, fish are good. I focus most of my efforts in northern New Jersey, where I live. But I used to have to move the boat. We used to have a great big fish bite in Cape May. And then I'd move it to Block Island in the summer. And Block Island still has giant fish, obviously, right? And Montauk and everything else. But there's a concentration in the spring and in the fall right off northern New Jersey where you really don't ha I don't have to go anywhere. But then these fish, I still believe a lot of these fish are going further offshore than we believe. And that's why you don't see like these mass schools up in in northern new england anymore like maybe you used to as much as you did the more data you got even though even the spaghetti tag point a to point b point a to point b then divided into size classes and locations and you can see where do the smaller fish migrate where do the larger fish migrate i mean if you're in tom's river right tom's river everyone said oh well in the springtime we catch those resident fish well, we tagged a whole bunch in Tom's River in March, right? Where did a lot of those tags get caught? They still got caught Long Island Sound, even New England. Those little fish, they're not resident fish. They move too, right? So that was something that everybody said, oh, well, they only migrate once they get to 28 inches or 30 inches. Well, that's clearly not totally true. So I think, once again, when you look at the migration and where they're going, if you, if you took those spaghetti tags and just looked at where do these fish migrate, point A to point B, and then from the big fish from where they migrate, point A to point B, I think that would give you a different story, right? Every document you read, what does it talk about? It talks about how, you know, the striped bass is this inshore species. You know, they go into the rivers, the bays, they stay within three miles. But if you look at just the data we've collected, it shows that they're not, especially the big girls. If you... Now, I, I haven't detailed done this, but I took a look at um, Gray's tagging of our, just our spaghetti tags and tried to look at where any fish over 38 inches was caught and where it was recovered. And if you look at those two data points, almost all of them are in the ocean. If it is in the ocean, it's Block Island Sound or it's maybe Cape Cod Canal. It's somewhere very close. They're not very few are in Raritan Bay or in, right, only during that spawning run is the only time you see them go into those estuaries. So I believe just from that little data that I'm looking at is, is that those fish, those big fish are not being seen that much by humans, right? We're not running into them very often. And I think the problem is that now you need a scientist to gather all that data that Gray has put together and actually do something with it, right? Take that data, really and analyze it, analyze our satellite tags of where they went and show that maybe they're offshore and what is that group of fish doing, you know? That I think would be a, a great thing and a whole new would open up a lot of eyes to the striped bass world.